for the plants that create air for us to breathe. We thank you, greater God. For the soil that nourishes us. For the light that guides us and the darkness that restores us. We thank you, Creator God. For the earth which is a home for us. We thank you, Creator God. Amen. Our opening hymn, number 307, God of the Sparrow, God of the Whale. Please be seated. Welcome to Knox Waterloo as we celebrate Earth Day. We are grateful for the guidance, leadership, and contributions of the creation care team in our worship service this morning. Welcome to all those gathered in the sanctuary, participating on live stream, listening on radio, and watching later on YouTube. We are grateful for your presence in this community. Today, may we grow in appreciation and mutual relationship with our natural environment. And may we grow, learn how to deepen our participation in climate justice. Today, together, we participate in a living earth acknowledgement, which is a rich practice that can nourish our relatedness and avail us to truce beyond the mentality of human domination. Incorporating our ecological nature as well as the demands of justice, it is an exploration, not a formula, to recognize and to remember. We aspire to set the conditions of shifting minds that are conditioned by domination into more skillful ways of seeing speaking, and acting. May we begin to realize our mutuality with all of creation. We open this gathering with an acknowledgement of the lands, waters, creatures, plants, and people whose being is bound up with our own in mutual dependence. We pay respects to the indigenous peoples of each place who through the years and to this day have loved lands, waters, 
and ecological communities into their well-being. In the lands and waters of the Grand River, River known to the indigenous peoples as Awash Tanong, we honor the indigenous peoples of this land, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the neutral peoples. We are grateful for their wise and loving efforts. We honor the lives of those who have contributed so much to our human family and yet are habitually devalued and exploited. We pause to honor all lands, waters, community members and ancestors recognized by each member of this gathering. May these words set the conditions for our actions of recognition repair and reciprocity. Beginning with recognition and gratitude, may our actions honor our relatedness. We vow to reciprocate the generosity of our ancestors and to protect the well-being of the living earth community. We come together in prayer. As we gather, we are thankful for your creation, for light and darkness, for air, wind, and sky, for earth and sea, for seeds, harvests, and plant life, for sunlight, moonlight, and starlight, for every living creature, swarming, flying, creeping, and grazing, for our lives. In our actions, meditations, and prayers, may we honor and celebrate your very good creation. As we seek wisdom on how to share our gratitude and love in good and healing ways. Creator God, we come before you in a time of crisis. We know that much of your creation struggles we begin to see and acknowledge the changes around us. We search for the causes and the cures and the collaborative ways we can commit to care for creation. We want to do what's right, but we don't always know what that is or agree how best to do it. You instructed us to till and to keep, but in our ravenous hunger for resources, too often we have interpreted this as a license for exploitation. Help us to recognize our complicity in ecological violence. Remind us that we are created as part of the ecosystem that is your creation, not parasites dry, draining its life. Remind us that we are creatures made by a loving creator, made to love and to care for each other and for all of creation. We ask for forgiveness where we have taken too much or cared too little, for hearts willing to listen and change and the will to follow through. Help us learn what we must, listening to the diverse voices of creation itself. Help us understand and love what you have loved and called very good. Enliven that understanding, we ask, to allow ourselves to be moved to act as we should and to halt actions that harm. Guide us as we try to discern how best to truly listen to each other as well as to creation, and then to heed your call. And now we join our voices in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Hear the good news, friends. God creates and loves creation. 
just as surely as God makes creation new every day through the morning and the rising of the sun each day, God offers us a new beginning each day. Just as surely as God makes creation new through the changing of the seasons and the sprouting on buds at the beginning of spring, God gives us a chance to make ourselves new over and over again. This is good news, friends. Thanks be to God. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Air gestures and words of peace with one another. Peace be with you. <laughs> join me up here at the front you can if you want I got a really cool song I want to sing with you today we're gonna to, we're gonna to be trees today in our song doesn't that excite everybody we're gonna be trees Do you know we share genetic material with trees it's true we share a lot of DNA with trees whoops oh you good you can just walk just take your time it's all good there's no rush awesome so I got something I want to show you today what do you see a piece of paper, a piece of paper. I wonder what else this is in this piece of paper. <gasps> oh my gosh, you are, you are well ahead of me. <laughs> Do you see in this piece of paper the earth, the soil and the earth? Do you see that in this piece of paper? Well, this came from a tree, right? The paper comes from plants. And plants grow from the earth and the soil. If we didn't have the earth, we wouldn't have a tree and we wouldn't have paper to write on or to print on. Do you see a cloud in this piece of paper? Do you see a cloud? It's white like a cloud. It also, what do clouds do? What do clouds bring? Rain. Ah, the tree that became this piece of paper needed to grow, and in order to grow, it needed water, it needed rain. If we didn't have the rain to nourish the ground, we wouldn't have the tree, and we wouldn't have the paper. Wow. Do you see the sun in this piece of paper? You see, I know you do. You see the sun in this piece of paper. What does the sun do? The sun, what does this... It brings, and what does, what does sunlight do for us? It, right on. It warms the earth. And it, the trees, when they turn their leaves to the sun, right on, then they absorb. They need the energy from the sun, and they need the rain. And also, the sun warms up the water, which creates the clouds, too. Right? We need all of these things. Isn't that amazing that we've got, in this piece of paper, the earth, the soil. We've got clouds. We've got... Yeah, trees, we've got the sun. You could go back all the way to the start of the universe and say that if the universe is in this piece of paper, think about that for a minute. That blows my mind. And it's true. It's true. I love that. 
We are so connected. We come from the earth too. The trees come from the earth and we come from the earth. We need, if it weren't for the sun or the clouds or the trees, we would not be here because we are created from the stuff that's in the universe and in the ground. It's almost like we are a part of the earth. We are the earth. Only we can, we can see things and we're aware of the earth. We are the universe. This, all the stuff that makes the stars and makes the earth is inside of us. That's amazing. So in a way, we're kind of like trees and we're going to be trees today. This is a really cool song I learned just the other day and it, the chorus goes like this. It's called, My Roots Go Down to the Earth. And that's the whole chorus. My roots go down, down to the earth, and it just repeats, and it goes like this. My roots go down, down to the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down. Let's do that. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down. Maybe we can do an action. Maybe we can put our hands down like this, like we're reaching down into the earth when, when, we, when we sing that, that chorus. And the verses are a little bit different. Um, let's be a maple tree. Put your arms up like you're a maple tree. Like, let's all be maple trees. And the, cor the verse goes like this. I am a maple tree swaying in the storm. I am a maple tree swaying in the storm. I am a maple tree swaying in the storm. My roots go down. And the chorus. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down. My branches reach, reach for the sun. My branches reach, reach for the sun. My branches reach, reach for the sun. My roots go down. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down. My leaves they turn, turn to the sun. My leaves they turn, turn to the sun. My leaves they turn, turn to the sun. My roots go down. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down. And together God's people say, Amen. I enjoyed being a tree with you today. Thank you for singing with me. You can follow Carol to your worship center, and we'll see you after the service. Thank you all for your singing.
Genesis 1, a paraphrase. In the beginning, there was nothing. No up or down, no near or far, no yesterday or tomorrow. Only God, here, now. Then came the idea. The idea came from God and was part of God, yet it seemed to have a life of its own. From that idea, all things came to be, light and darkness, time and space, energy and matter, everything needed to make a universe. God gathered them together and set to work. Out of swirling gas clouds, fiery stars ignited with a whoosh. Planets and moons spun together, and galaxies danced like snowflakes on a winter night. It must have been wonderful, dreaming, imagining, making all those things that had never been made before. God could see that it was all good. The idea kept growing. On the edge of one galaxy, a sun. Whirling around the sun, a planet. Small, lifeless, covered in dark waters. Nothing special at first. Then the breath of God came like a breeze and ruffled the surface of the waters. Something wonderful happened. Deep in the seas, there was life. Simple at first, but then more complex. It was as if God could simply not get enough of dreaming up new forms of life. They filled the seas, they walked on the land, they flew in the air. Flowers bloomed and insects buzzed. The little world teemed with life and color scent and sound. God looked at everything with delight. You know how it is when you make something. You picture it in your mind, but sometimes your own creation can surprise you. It was all so good, so wonderful. Lovely patterns hidden everywhere. The cleverness of living things who rode on the wind and waves to make their homes in every imaginable place. God enjoyed every bit of it. Day and night, light and dark, land and sea, sky and earth, sun and moon. Maybe God even laughed out loud at the sight of dolphins leaping or birds doing funny dances to attract each other. This is too good to keep to myself, thought God. So God made another kind of living thing, one even more like God than all the others. This living thing could love, laugh, delight in beauty, think, imagine, wonder, choose, maybe even have ideas of its own. When God was finished working, it was time to rest. Glad to be part of such a wonderful world, the new creature rested too. Peace be with you. So we're so grateful at Knox to have a group of people who make up a small creation care team, folks who are committed to helping keep before us as a congregation the importance of creation spirituality and thinking about ways in which we as a community faith can be called to live out a deeper commitment to the stewardship of the natural world, the greatest gift from God. In preparation for today's service, I asked some of the members of the creation care team why do you do what you do why is it important to you to be a part of this team why is the ministry of creation care important in your life and we're going to hear the responses from a few members of the team today and the first 
is from Nancy Matthews. I, I asked them this question. I wanted them to share so that we can both learn what inspires other people so that maybe we can become more inspired too. So let's hear what Nancy has to say about this. Why am I involved in creation care? In recent years, I feel like my eyes have been really open to all that is around me, noticing the natural world, wanting to learn more about the plants and creatures I encounter, coming to love them, and then wanting to protect them. Maybe we appreciate things more when we realize we could lose them. So I want to learn about the migration of monarch butterflies and to identify that bird swooping by or the plant by the side of the path. All of this increases my sense of awe and wonder at my fellow creatures in God's world and galvanizes me to be an active partner in healing and caring for this planet. Why am I... Its origins is a mystery in an infinitesimally small fraction of a second, the universe bloomed into existence. The Big Bang, we call it. An unimaginably hot, seething mass of energy and subatomic particles expanded and cooled. Now, eventually, the universe cooled enough to allow these particles to come together to form the first atoms, hydrogen and helium which in turn came together in a gravitational dance and attracted more atoms, countless in number, until there was enough gravity and pressure to start a nuclear reaction and the first stars were born. Now, atoms danced hotly in the cores of these stars, dancing so closely to one another that they combined to form heavier elements, beryllium, carbon, oxygen, and after millions or even billions of years, some of these stars became so big and so hot they, that they collapsed under their own gravity, blowing themselves up and casting these precious heavier elements out into the universe and forming even heavier elements in the process of exploding. Now eventually, released into the far reaches of space, these new atoms began to swirl together, the wreckage from one dead star drawing closely enough to one another to begin a new dance and forming a new star, our sun. But not all of these elements and atoms became part of the new star. Some of the particles circled around their parent star, combining in much smaller groups to form planets, each with a different personality. Now, one such planet was molten and hot and rocky, and over millions and millions of years, it cooled down. It was bombarded violently by asteroids and comets, visitors which brought with them water and organic compounds, and on the surface of this small, fragile planet, a new dance of atoms and molecules began and resulted in the marvel of life. Four billion years later, products of the miracle of evolution on this planet, we were formed from the ground to sit in this room together it's a miracle that we are here together. We are made from stardust. Every atom in our bodies was created either in the Big Bang or in the cores of giant stars which flung their valuable cargo into the cosmos. The book of Genesis tells a beautiful and poetic story of creation, tells it to us in the form of a poem, that all of creation is sacred. It's infused with the ongoing activity of God. In fact, the Hebrew, in the beginning, could be translated in a beginning time, meaning that that beginning time is still ongoing. 
Genesis was never intended to tell us precisely how the universe was born, never intended to do so. It's a piece of art. The gift of science tells us the how. Science and faith are not in opposition to one another. When viewed through the lens of an open heart and an open mind, both science and art can instill in us a sense of sacred awe. Ellen McIntosh, I'd like to hear your response to the question why you participate in creation care. Thank you. Good morning. I think you've heard something about this before this morning, but Earth is our home. It's the only one we have. And if we don't take care of it, what will we do? If, it's, if it can't sustain us anymore, what will we do? In Canada, we're kind of protected from all of this reality in the rest of the world. People are running from the effects of climate change and war and all the things we do to each other. People are, are having to deal with climate change now. This is not a future problem. And all of those people, every single one of those people in the world is our neighbor. What's our command? It, our command is to love our neighbor. I'm passionate about creative care, or creation care because, well it is creative, <laughs> creation care because it's our job to care for our home. We look after our houses, our apartments, our rooms, we look after those. It's our job to look after our home. And we can do it. We have the resources, we can educate ourselves, it's fantastic how much work has already been done and the things we can learn from those people. We can work together. We do that all the time here. And we can have a sustainable future if we want it. Do you ever have a moment when the beauty of the natural world just makes you stop and go, wow. Ever have one of those moments? I hope you have. I think we need to be intentional about, about that, about practicing keeping our eyes and our hearts open to those, those moments which could potentially fill us with awe and wonder. I had such a moment. I have such moments, well, every time I stop and actually see the world, <laughs> which is not often enough. But I had a really powerful moment when I was 16 years old and I got to visit a family in, in Yukon Territory. Here's a picture of me at 16 years of age. And it was, it was an amazing introduction. Having come from little PEI, where the biggest kind of wilderness is a small woodlot, being in Yukon was, oh my gosh, this is amazing. We did a two-day hike in the mountains, and this was one moment in that mountain hike. The moment happened late at night. We were lying in our sleeping bags, not in our tent, but outside the tent, and the sky was crystal clear. We were nowhere near any light pollution, could see every star in the sky. And then it started from the distance, and it got larger. It was a green, a green spot that just grew and grew and grew. Aurora Borealis, the northern lights, they enveloped us. We lay on the ground looking up, and they, they were so close. They were like curtains. You could see the movement like curtains blowing in the wind. And we were, I was speechless. I'll never, ever forget how that moment felt for me. 
I don't think I was aware of it at the time, but that became a deep, I'm feeling emotional just thinking about it now. It's funny, we look to the past, sometimes in the moment things don't sink in, but then when you think about it afterwards, you go, wow, that meant something, that meant something that moment to me. And I became so deeply aware of the, the mystery and the awesomeness of all of the universe and the world as a part of the universe and my place as a part of the universe. It was amazing. Now, there was in the Yukon a very sad time as well, and that's illustrated in the next photograph. That's an old picture of these machines during, during the gold rush days and since, because gold is still being mined <laughs> in the Yukon. At least it was years ago when I, I visited there. These machines sat on a pond of water and they would dig the earth and move the pond along as they dug earth and dump the earth out its, the back of the machine. And of course, it was looking for gold and it was rigged in such a way that it could find the gold. And, and it just destroyed the earth. You can drive through regions of Yukon now and it's just kilometers and kilometers of earth that you can tell has been tilled or mined in this way and it's never recovered. It was very sad. It was, it was such a paradox for me to have both of those experiences. The experience of the, of the gift, the gift of, of the creator of the universe and also the ways in which we can disrespect such a gift. Let's hear from Grant Burks, what he has to say about why he's involved in creation care. One of the things that strengthens my faith is my sense of awe and wonder of creation. From the strangeness of nuclear forces and quantum phenomena to the cosmos that stretches above us, awe and wonder gives me a sense of the divine behind all of this. So I guess it is natural that when creation is in peril, as it is now, that I am compelled really to respond in whatever way I can. I've recently read a book titled The Temple at the End of the Universe, in which the writer when considering the state of the world, says, now would be a good time for an interventionist God. <laughs> but he doesn't see evidence of that happening, really, and neither do I. On the other hand, I do align with one of Hugh's I thoughts, which is that, for the most part, God works in the world through people, through their hands and efforts. This I have seen in people who are responding to the climate crisis and to other environmental concerns. This gives me hope. And while I cannot say that I've had a Pentecost experience, I think that I have detected the Spirit firmly nudging me in the direction of caring for creation. Thank you, Grant, for that. I'm going to wrap things up, I, th I think, by reflecting on, on a, th a theme that's emerged today. Uh, kind of unintentionally, <laughs> and that is that the, the word awe or awesomeness has, has come up time and again. <laughs> um, that's what I felt when I was singing with the kids and you all earlier today, thinking about how we are so connected deeply with the, 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 the created world. We think we're independent and we don't need, but gosh, we need, we are so dependent on the earth and on other people and on this web of, of creation that exists. We are not independent. We are dependent. Independence is an illusion. And when we stop and consider that, it, it makes me want to treat that web of creation more gently. It's hard in life to, to live uh, in such a way that doesn't cause any ecological damage. But I think becoming mindful of the ways in which we live, which do affect the earth negatively, can, can help us begin to, 
begin to revere it more and begin to make small changes in the way. We, we want to care for the things that we love, right? <laughs> and I hope today you felt from the members of the team and from the prayers and the songs and what the choir sang earlier is this love, this love for creation. And we want to care for the things that we love. That's a great responsibility and it is a, it is a joyful activity to care for the things that we love. I hope the intention today was not to make anyone feel guilty, not at all. It's easy for us to go to the place of guilt when we talk about ecology, but, but that's not the intention. That Today it's about love. It's about awe, experiencing awe and responding to that awe in a spirit of love and care. And when we do... When we do make a decision to revere the earth, I think that it is Genesis 1 all over again. Because we are partnering with God in recreating, in, in continuing what God began to create. Somebody said once, um, for some reason God doesn't seem to work without us. God needs us. To do work in the world and we need God to do work in the world there's this amazing partnership care for the world it involves God and it involves us and that is a beautiful a beautiful metaphor I'm going to end with that and wish you all peace as you hopefully find moments to feel awe in your life and reflect on how you can love creation more deeply peace be with you as you do we're going to sing together a hymn, at number 717, We Cannot Own the Sunlit Sky. It is great to be together today, so grateful for the continued wisdom and prompting and direction of the creation care team to keep us aware of all the ways we continue to be in awe and to practice climate justice. Uh, 
We are going to have a continued opportunity to learn beyond worship today. There is an Earth Sunday climate workshop that will be about 90 minutes immediately following um, worship, and it's in the Knox room? Yeah, in the Knox room upstairs. Um, so we'll look forward to that time as well. Um, also today is the last day to sign up for Companies Coming. Um, this will be happening in a couple of weeks on a Saturday. This is an opportunity to connect, to enter into each other's homes and lives, have conversation, and like good Presbyterians, have food together. And um, Christy has organized this, and we're so grateful for um, her love of building up community. And she will be in um, the, the hall, the atrium space, um, at a table. If you want some help signing up and you don't, don't or get a little bit overwhelmed by Google Forms, um, so you can sign up to be a guest or a host. And um, we really encourage you to do this, to get maybe get outside your comfort zone a little bit, um, to have some more chance for some more intimate gatherings together. And last Sunday after church, there was the great opportunity to have yummy food together at the Spring Fling. And we thank everyone who participated and bought a ticket. A little over $300 was raised um, so that we can have some more uh, tables in the hall. Some of our tables are getting old and have collapsed a couple times. So thank you for, um, for participating in, in that time. And we're grateful for the Women's Circle of Care for organizing all of that. This Wednesday is the last Wednesdays at Knox for the year until September. And it's a potluck lunch, and one of the yearly speakers, the bird man, people call him, will be here, and um, you can bring different parts to share in the meal and conversation and some learning, continuing to learn about creation together. And next Sunday evening, um, April 28th, from 7 till 9, we're going to continue our um, exploring as young adults together around the Bible, and it's about genre and the rhythm of the text, and, uh, and we're going to be hearing from a DJ. So anyone kind of in between the ages of 18 and 35-ish, although we don't have to be specific with that, can come and join in conversation with Hugh and I and various young adults, and there's different people that come out every month. So if you've never been, um, don't feel shy about coming and building up this great community of young adults in our congregation. And um, we are grateful for Dave, our treasurer, and Ruth, our director of finance, and our finance team for the continued transparency of our, final, of our finance updates. Um, that went out in this week at Knox, and we look forward to a, a video telling us a little bit more about where finances are at. But we are really appreciative and grateful for um, your givings, especially throughout the end of Lent and into the Easter season, the generosity um, that happened. And we ended up in a surplus for what we had expected for that time. So thank you very much. And look into the details of all the numbers if you are a number person and you want to know all those details. The creator who spoke the earth into being and breathed life into our bodies continues to speak and breathe life into our world today, providing us with enough resources for what we need to share with one another. With thanks for our life and this precious earth, let us share our gifts through our offering this morning.
please be seated. I'm going to invite um, Ellen up and we're going to share in a prayer together. This is a prayer for all of creation. And we're going to invite you throughout the prayer, there'll be different stanzas for you to respond. So when um, one of us says together, the response will be, we are stronger. So let's try that. Together, we are stronger. So we are reminded through this prayer and as we have through the whole service of our mutuality and our dependency on one another in creation. Let us pray. God of creation, we are thankful for your awesome work in creation. You have weaved all of life together and it is very good. We are grateful for all, for all that protects and cares for your good works the sunlight and water that sustains life, the earth that grounds and nourishes life, and the earth beings that care for and protect life. We give thanks for all whose actions care for your good works, and we ask your blessings on the actions we offer here and on the actions of those across the church and beyond during this Earth Week. Together, we, we are, are stronger. stronger. As we care for your creation, provide us with the humility and curiosity needed to continually learn about the marvels of your works and to deepen our understanding of how our actions, good and bad, affect all of creation. We give thanks for the opportunity to learn and grow with your good works, and we ask your blessing on the intentions we offer here today and on the intention of those across the church and beyond during this Earth Week. Together, we, we are, are stronger. stronger. Although the journey is hard and our hearts might be afraid and filled with doubts, may we continue to act and learn, seeking climate justice with the confidence and strength of your presence guiding us. God of creation, receive our prayers for the love of your good works. And we ask in your love to answer the prayers we offer today and the prayers of those across the church and beyond acting together. Together, we are stronger. May we continue to follow in the way that you are leading <clears throat> with hopeful and daring hearts until we have reached your commonwealth of justice and peace for all. With all creation, God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let us join together in our closing hymn, number 434, For the Beauty of the Earth.
Our benediction today comes to you from, uh, from Nancy Matthews. It is a, a beautiful blessing written by Sylvia Walker connected with the ecological organization called Arasha. Sovereign love and care. Send us out, nourished. Thank you. And so with all the realm of nature, the growing and creeping things, the running and leaping things, the flying and the swimming things, we proclaim your glory, which reaches to the heavens, holding all in sovereign love and care. Send us out, nourished and refreshed, to work in partnership with you, bringing your resurrection message to all the inhabitants of this world in earth and sea and sky. Give us vision and new commitment to take up the challenges to which you call us, that in company with all created things, we may sing the joy, the beauty, and the glory that is creation's song. Amen. Go in peace, go in peace, go in peace, go in peace. I'm Hugh Donnelly, one of the ministers at Knox Waterloo. Thank you for being a part of the worshiping community today. You can find us online at knoxwaterloo.ca, and you are always welcome to call us at 519-886-4150. This broadcast is made possible by you, listeners and friends of Knox, who support Knox's broadcast ministry. Please consider making a donation in gratitude as you are able, and may the peace of Christ be with you.